and a sonic feature highlight. That's what we're doing today, guys. So I just feel like with the Panasonic Lumix cameras, there's a lot of kind of features and, you know, it's little things that I appreciate about these cameras that I'm really just like constantly talking to people about and reminding them about and bringing up. And so I just wanted to start a series on my channel kind of highlighting some of these really cool features. And the first one today we're going to look at is essential for those kind of hybrid shooters out there. I mean, Panasonic doesn't get the credit it deserves on a lot of stuff. Like Canon gets all this credit for their like, ooh, we've got a photo video switch, but Panasonic kind of secretly has their own version of that. It's just kind of weirdly labeled and hidden in the menus and not the easiest to use without a bit of an explanation. So we're gonna look at it, get into it, say what it is, why it's great, and how I use it as a Lumix hybrid shooter doing video and photos. Now, one thing I wanna make clear right off the bat, this is not the custom menus. I don't use the custom menus and I haven't since the GH4. Now they were great back then, you know, ooh, here's a normal mode, slow motion, 60 mode, variable frame rate mode. But generally there's so many better options on the Lumix camera these days that I think the custom menus are kind of irrelevant, especially for the hybrid shooters out there. So the mode I'm talking about in this video is called Creative Video Combined Set. Now, the reason this is great is because it allows you to set it and forget it. And after you have it set up, you're just gonna switch between video and photo mode, and that's it. So you're gonna wanna go into the menu, go to the gear, and it's the very last option in image quality it's right here at the page two it's the only setting creative com video combined a set and as you can see you can set the f-stop shutter speed iso white balance photo style metering mode af mode and that is it so essentially anything set to the video camera is going to be different between your video mode and your photo mode right and then anything set as the camera is going to be the same so for me i like to have my iso and this exposure compensation and stuff different because um, with video your shutter speed's a lot more locked down and if you want a correct shutter speed you really want that to be different than your photos where a lot of times you might want a really slow shutter speed or a really fast shutter speed to either add some movement and motion blur or to just freeze that action and so Having my ISO and shutter speed independent from video to photo is really good. Cause a lot of times with photo, I'll just put it on auto ISO and change the shutter speed and aperture. Um, with video, I operate totally differently. How I meter and how I use my settings in photo and video is very, very different. White balance, usually I'm not using a flash. You know, if I'm in a situation shooting photos and videos, usually the white balance is gonna be the same. So I'm gonna leave the white balance you know, individualized. But again, that could change with you as well. So my settings in that mode is going to be pretty much the same between photo and video. My photo style is one that I always have different because whether I'm shooting Vlog or HLG or CineD or any of these things, I shoot for video. I generally wanna just use natural or standard for photos because it doesn't do anything weird or have any bad side effects. My mirror mode I have the same because again, I usually generally think that it's probably the best to just kind of leave that the same. You know, I'm, I'm usually using like center weighted or something along those lines. And then AF mode, I tend to leave the same as well. So if I'm in like face tracking one plus mode, for example, in video, I probably want to be in the same for photo as well. But again, you can change any of these based on your particular use situations and how you want to use this camera in particular. Plus I always kind of hated that kind of like um, thing where you're in photo mode on the Panasonic cameras and then you hit record and it like punches in in a weird way. If you're you know, just hitting the video record button in the photo mode, uh, so. While that's a, not a bad option, generally I don't love that and we still have to get over those issues of like, oh well, you shoot all your videos in vlog and then you hit record and then suddenly you've got a couple shots in like standard or natural or whatever you monitor your photos with. 
and it's just not great. Again, if your items are all set to the photo camera, when you switch the dial between photo and video, nothing's going to change. But if you set any of these to the video camera, then the independent video and photo sections of your camera will remember your previously set setting in that area and they won't switch. So this isn't like the custom menus, like when you set your white balance, for example, in the custom menu and you save that custom menu, every time you open that custom menu, it'll default to whatever you saved it as. So if you had it on tungsten you, and then you switch to daylight and then you turn the camera off and on again, it'll switch back to tungsten, which is pretty annoying. So say you're shooting in an environment situation, no flash, you set your you know, photo mode to daylight, turn the camera off, turn it back on, it's still on daylight. If you set it to tungsten, it'll stay on tungsten until you change it again. And that's why I think this feature set is so important. So you can kind of see where the differences in these cameras come into play and you can customize which elements you want to change, which elements you want to be the same and go through those points, you know, point by point to really customize this camera for hybrid use. I'm shooting in these nightclubs a lot of the time. And so it's been invaluable for me doing events, clubs, weddings, if I'm like unfortunate enough to have to be shooting photos and videos at the same time. It's just really nice. And, you know, in, unlike Canon or Fuji or whatever, there's you don't have to have a dedicated switch or whatever. You just use the built-in photo and video switch that's already on the camera, which it just makes sense to me. I'm not really sure exactly which camera this is available on, but the ones that is available on, like the GH5 Mark II, the GH6, the S5, S5 Mark II, a lot of the newer Panasonic cameras have this, and unfortunately, if the older ones don't have it, I doubt they're gonna go back and build this in. So definitely look in your user manual to see which cameras do have this and which ones don't. But it's something I really appreciate as someone who is doing travel or events and all this stuff. And the kind of last problem that this has is someone who likes to switch between video modes as well. And so this doesn't really help those type of people, but you know, we're gonna get into some more stuff in future episodes about what someone who you know, might want to switch through these video features quickly might have. But unfortunately, this is more of like a hybrid shooter, you know, videographer, photographer type of situation. It's also great for travel and things like that. But anyway, guys, my other stuff is going to be like a bunch of different kind of highlights and features combined into one. But this creative video combined set is has a weird name. It's hard to find. Not a lot of people know about it or use it. And I think it's just really invaluable when it comes to these Panasonic Lumix cameras. And I wanted to really focus the first part of these Panasonic Lumix feature highlights on just creative video combined and how I tend to use it. And I'll hopefully give you guys a few ideas on how you might use it as well. So thank you guys for watching the first highlight video for these Panasonic features. Keep an eye out for more. We're gonna do like a full episode on ISO, full episode on like stuff that has nothing really to do with the camera. I've got a lot of ideas on where to take this series and where to look at some of these like highlights and features and little hidden tips and tricks about these cameras that other people might not know. So actually I would really appreciate if you guys kind of go into the comments and leave some of your tips and tricks so people can start looking at those already and also so I can steal some of those ideas. Um, but no, for real, uh, I just want to continue the conversation and get these ideas and concepts and features out to people because as much info as there as there is about these cameras there could always be more discussion and even if you know about some of these features somebody else might have no idea maybe someone who just jumped ship over to the gh6 or the s5 mark ii so anyway thanks for stopping by and i will see you guys in the next video